Hey there, welcome to DIY Projects with Pete, episode eight. Today I'm going to show you how to build a cornhole game toss set out of some half inch plywood and two by fours. Overall, it's an easy project to build, it's cheap to make, and the process is a lot of fun. Now it's perfect for barbecues, for parties, and for tailgating, and you can customize it with your favorite design or sports team logo. Now I'm a University of Nebraska alum, so I chose to put my favorite football team on there, which is the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Today I'm going to show you the process of building the tables, of painting them, and finally making the bags if you choose to make your own. And so let's go ahead and get started with some of the tools and supplies that you'll need for today's project. For tools, you're going to need to pick up or borrow a miter saw, drill, an orbital sander, and a jigsaw or six inch hole bit. And for supplies, you'll need to pick up some two and a half inch screws, one and a half inch screws, carriage bolts, wing nuts and washers, some paint supplies and stencils, minwax, semi-gloss poly, a little bit of sandpaper, and finally some masking tape. Then head to your lumber store to pick up some half inch thick plywood. It's commonly available in two foot by four foot sheets, which is convenient because that's the exact size you need for today's project. You'll also want to pick up some two by fours for the frame and for the table legs. And if you choose to make your own bags, you'll want to pick up some corn, beans, or other fill to put in the fabric bags that you make out of duck cloth. If you don't want to make your own, just head over to Amazon or to a local department store and buy bags there. And for the complete list of instructions, tools, and supplies, just head over to DIYPete.com forward slash cornhole toss. Now before we get started, I want to quickly thank Murdoch's Ranch and Home Supply, Craig Jig, Minwax, and Jack Clamp for making all of the tools and supplies that I use for all of my DIY projects. Let's go ahead and get started by cutting the 2x4s for the frame of your table. You'll need to cut two 48 inch long pieces for each cornhole board. Next, cut two boards that are 21 inches long for each cornhole board, otherwise a total of four for the entire set. Then cut two legs for each platform. They need to be 12 inches long. To make your foldable legs, you'll first want to measure one and three quarter inches down from the top, and then you'll draw a line across with a straight edge. Find the center point at 1.75 inches, then use a compass to draw a nice round arc, which will then cut so that you can easily open and close the legs. Use a 3 8 inch drill bit to put a hole right through that center point, and later we'll put a carriage bolt through this hole to attach the 2x4 to the frame of the platform. Next, use a jigsaw to follow the line of the arc you had drawn, and this is going to create a nice rounded top edge of each leg. Then use an orbital sander to round off the edges a bit more and to smooth things out. Now it's time to clean off your work surface so we can begin assembling the tabletop. Grab your half inch plywood, put it on the surface, and then dry fit all of the 2x4s together. You'll have two pieces that are 48 inches long, and then two pieces that are 21 inches long. Connect all of the 2x4s to each other's at the corners. First I like to drill pilot holes, and then I'll follow up with two and a half inch wood screws. Make sure that you use a square so that all of the corners are at nice 90 degree angles. Then we can flip everything over and attach the half inch plywood to the frame. First, I like to drill pilot holes about every eight to 10 inches so that I don't split the wood and then follow up with one and a half inch wood screws. Now that we've finished with the first board, we can move on to the second cornhole board. And I wanted to show you another technique of how you can connect all of the boards to each other. And this is by drilling pocket holes with a tool called a Craig jig. A couple benefits of using the pocket holes for this project are that number one, your screws are all hidden underneath and out of view, and two, you don't have to fill in any holes at the end with putty. So right now, Allie's drilling pocket holes into the frame, which are going to enable us to be able to connect the frame to the half inch plywood from underneath using one and one quarter inch screws. Allie's also drilling two pocket holes on the ends of those 21 inch frame pieces and that's going to allow us to be able to connect all the frame pieces at the corners using two and a half inch Craig jig screws. In this clip, you can see she's attaching the two by fours to each other at the corners using those two and a half inch long Craig jig screws. And now we're attaching those two by fours to the half inch plywood from the underside using those one and one quarter inch Craig jig screws. And lastly, here's a quick look at what those Craig jig holes look like from the underside. And the big benefit is that you just don't have the holes on the top of your board. 
Now it's time to attach the legs to the frame of the platform, and you may be wondering why everything's already painted, and it's because I actually refilmed this section after the build because I found an easier way to explain the process. And attaching the legs and getting the angles right is probably the trickiest part of the project in my opinion, so make sure to take your time on that. The first step is to line up your rounded 2x4 in the corner, clamp it down, and then use your 3 8 inch drill bit to drill through that hole you had already made into that 2x4. Next, take your 3 8 inch carriage bolt, which is 4.5 inches long, and put it through the two 2x4s. Then put a 3 8 inch washer on the other side and a wing nut to secure the two boards to each other. Then test out the leg to make sure it opens and closes easily. Mine was a little tight in the corner, so I ended up taking it off again and then using an orbital sander with an aggressive pad on it to take off some of that extra wood. Once you have that sanded down, you can go ahead and test it again. It looks like mine's rotating a lot better now, so we can move on to the next leg. The second leg is done exactly how we did the first, so use your 3 8 inch drill bit to go through the 2x4s, and then you'll connect the two again with a 3 8 inch by 4.5 inch long carriage bolt. Once both legs are attached, go ahead and test both of them one more time. If you need to make any adjustments, just take them off and sand them down a bit. To make sure your platform is exactly 12 inches on the one side, and that the legs have the perfect angle, I recommend finding a large surface like I did here and then putting the cornhole table on it. Next, you want to slide a box underneath and use a measuring stick or a tape measure to make sure that the table is 12 inches at the ends on each corner. Then move the edge of your new platform to the side of your work surface, open up a leg, and use that work surface as a straight edge so that you can draw the angle that you'll need to cut using a miter saw in a later step. To repeat the process for the second leg, make sure that your platform is propped up using a box and that it's 12 inches at the back of each corner. Then slide your platform over and draw that angle. Now you can cut the angles using your miter saw and normally they're gonna be between about six to 10 degrees. And you could forgo the whole table leveling process if you'd like, but sometimes some of the boards on the frame are a little twisted or the hole doesn't get drilled in the exact right spot. And so if you use this table leveling method, you'll ensure that all of the legs have the exact right angle so that your table does not wobble. Now we can double check that both back corners are at 12 inches. And remember that I refilmed this section, which is why everything's painted and that hole's already drilled. So let's go ahead and get back in order and we'll move on to the hole drilling process. To figure out where the hole is going to go, we'll first want to find the center of that platform, which is at 12 inches. Once you find that, then measure nine inches down and that's where we'll put the center of our compass to draw that six inch diameter hole. Now I wanted to show you a couple examples of how you can actually create the holes. So for the first, I just took a scrap piece of plywood to show you the jigsaw method. You drill a hole so that you can get your jigsaw blade in and started, and then you follow around the line that you drew with your compass, and you'll get a pretty darn good circle it works really well, you just have to make sure that you take your time to follow that line so that you get a nice round cut. The second method is to use a six inch hole saw, which you can just attach to your drill, and you find the center point and then you can begin drilling, or if you used your compass to draw the circle, you can also line it up with that circle. Now you can buy these six inch hole saws at your local hardware store. You can also find them on Amazon, they are sometimes a little bit cheaper there, I know mine was $25, and I'll have a link to that in my post. After you've drilled the hole, use a little sandpaper to clean up the rough edges and to smooth things out. If you ended up connecting the plywood to the frame using screws from the top side, make sure that all of those screws have been countersunk and then use a little wood putty to fill in and level out the surface. Let the wood putty dry a bit and then use a sander to remove any excess putty and to smooth out the entire top of the board. The next step is to paint your boards, and I ended up picking up a couple small cans of latex paint because it's durable and it doesn't have the fumes that oil-based paint has. I painted the underside, the 2x4 frame, and the legs one color. Then I measured for my border, so I decided to measure one and one quarter inches in so that I could do a white border around the complete tabletop. Then I followed up with some masking tape and just ran it straight along those marks that I had made. To create the triangle design or the arrow that points to the hole, I first found the center point at 12 inches and then I lined up the masking tape with that 
and then the inside corner of that masking tape that I had used to create the border. As you can see in this picture, I did it on both sides to complete that triangle. Once you've created the stencil for that triangle, you can begin painting. And for this process, I used a brush, but you could also use a roller as seen here. Sometimes with a roller, you'll get a little bit smoother and more even finish. I used a brush to make the white border and just make sure you don't put it on too thick because you don't want any white paint dripping onto the edges of your frame. And I did two coats of both the white and the red. After the second coat of paint, you can remove that masking tape. And I actually like to remove the masking tape before it's completely dried because I found that I get cleaner edges when I do that. Then I used a circular stencil to create a border around the hole. Now it's time to put a design on the board. Now you can either paint something on freehand, you can order vinyl decals, or you can get some stencils. I ended up ordering vinyl decals that I used as a stencil, and then I painted the inside. I went to the University of Nebraska, so I'm a big Nebraska Cornhusker football fan, and that's why I put the ends on there. And the final process of the build is to seal that top piece of plywood. I used an oil-based polyurethane, so just make sure that you have plenty of ventilation when you do this. And you can use either a roller or a brush for this process. In case you decide to make your own bags for the game, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the process. You'll want to get some duck cloth, which is just a thick cloth, and you'll cut it into seven inch by seven inch squares. Make sure you get two different colors so that you can make four bags for each color. Now I didn't have much experience sewing, I just really wanted to give it a shot and to learn the process. But if you don't want to learn the process, you can order the bags off Amazon for about 26 bucks for a complete set. Otherwise, have a friend help you out. You'll sew the bags together inside out, and then you'll want to reverse them, and then use a pen to push out the edges so that you have nice square corners. Fill the bag with between 14 to 16 ounces of either dried corn, dried beans, or plastic pellets. If I did it again, I'd either use dried beans or plastic pellets because the corn will eventually break down, and sometimes the dust even will come back out through the cloth. After filling up the bag, you can close it up by sewing that last edge. And here's just a little close-up of the process where you seal up the bag. All right, thanks so much for tuning in to DIY Projects with Pete, episode number eight. For complete show notes and instructions, just head over to DIYPete.com forward slash cornhole toss. And don't forget to friend us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash DIY projects with Pete. I hope this video inspires you to go make your own. So good luck, have fun, and we'll see you next time. Cheers from Bozeman, Montana.